Hey, my friend, welcome to this special Saturday edition of the Daily Writer Podcast. Each weekday, we bring you a short lesson that helps you live out the four practices of a successful writer, creativity, consistency, courage, and connection. But here on the weekend edition, we often take a deeper dive into those topics through conversations with writers, as well as teaching that helps us apply what we're learning. And for more, you can visit us at dailywriterlife.com. If you've always thought about writing a book, which I hope that you have since you're listening to a writing podcast, I highly encourage you to do so. Writing a book is honestly one of the most rewarding experiences that you will ever have in your entire life. However, a book is only the beginning of so many other possibilities. You can take the message of your book and spin it off into coaching, consulting, memberships, courses, and so many other cool things. And one of the most life-impacting ways that you can share the message in your books is by doing live events. So I'm really excited today to feature a conversation with my good friend, Phyllis Jenkins, who is here to help authors get a handle on how to put together a powerful live event that can impact lives. Phyllis is a transformational coach, business mentor, host of Power Lift Stories podcast, and founder of the Powerful Journey organization, where she's on a mission to mobilize 100,000 women to tell their stories and write their books. Man, I love that mission. That is so awesome. Phyllis is also the author of several books, and her most recent one is Telling Our Stories, an Anthology of Faith, Volume 1. Phyllis empowers and equips women to turn their life challenges into life-changing messages. She provides several platforms for them to stand up, step out, and share their messages with courage and clarity. Phyllis gives back to the community by awarding two annual educational scholarships, one to single moms of special needs children and the other to graduating high school seniors. So in other words, Phyllis knows her stuff, and she's a pretty awesome lady, as you can tell by her bio. In this conversation that Phyllis and I have today, she shares why you should consider creating a live event, what makes an event successful, the process for creating events, and much more. And this was such a helpful conversation, I have to be honest with you, because live events have always really intimidated me. Of course, I love going to live events. They're a blast. They can be life-changing. But I've never really felt comfortable putting something on myself, particularly one for writers. However, we are having our first in-person live event for The Daily Writer coming up this fall. There will, there will be more details about that coming out. So, so this conversation was immensely helpful for me because I got to pick Phyllis's brain about how to actually put together a good live event. So if you've ever thought about doing this, you are going to really enjoy this conversation where she gives you the lowdown on how to actually put together an awesome live event. So let's get right to the conversation with my good friend, Phyllis Jenkins. Phyllis, I'm so thrilled to have you as a guest on the Daily Writer podcast. If I'm not mistaken, this is your first appearance, so probably the first of many, I assume. So welcome. It's really good to have you here. Well, thank you. I'm super excited to be here. And uh, yeah, hopefully it won't be the the last time I'm here. So looking forward to it, Kent. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, it has been uh, a pleasure and an honor to have you part. Actually, you and your husband, Dave, as part of the Daily Writer community, which has been a lot of fun and I've got to say, it's been a blast getting to see your success over the last few months and also with your book release and you're doing live events, which is what we're going to, of course, talk about today. And it just, I have to say, you have really inspired me to think on a bigger level. So, um, so I, I appreciate that you, you tend to make, to make things bigger wherever you go. And what I mean by that is you help people think bigger, you inspire people and enlarge their vision. And that's a gift. So I just want you to know up front, I really have appreciated that. Well, thank you. And, and it, it is my gift. So, <laughs> Well, you're very good at it. I appreciate it. Well, we're here to talk about live events. And I know this is a regular part of what you do. And I thought this was a really, really good topic whenever you suggested it, because a lot of us who are writers, let's be honest, we're many of us are introverted. When we think about events, it creates anxiety within us and maybe some stress. So this is an important topic because I'm also putting on a live event. This October, I'm planning on having the very first Daily Writer Retreat. Uh, Details yet to be finalized, but I'm very much in live event mode as well. And I feel pretty intimidated about this, if I'm going to be honest. So so this conversation is very, very timely. Um, And I guess my first question I want to throw out there is, why should authors consider creating a live event? We spend all this time and energy doing books, but what's the value and the purpose of doing live events? Oh, there is so much value in it, in that a live event gives you the opportunity, you the author, to meet your prospects, 
and to create an unforgettable experience of excitement, enthusiasm, enjoyment, and anticipation of reading your book. Um, it also, oh, uh, yeah, it attracts more buyers. It gives you more exposure and it presents more opportunities for speaking engagements. Example, the authors that stand on the Powerful Journey Women's platform at our conferences, many of them can't get speaking engagement invitations before the conference is over. And these are, of course, paid wow. speaking engagements. So, uh, so yeah, there are lots of, of great advantages to having a live event. Now, when we talk about live events, I know there are different kinds. There are workshops, which tend to be smaller and more intimate. There are retreats, which are even smaller and more intimate, typically. Then there are conferences, which can be virtually any size from small to massive. What kind of events? Actually, let me rephrase, let me rephrase that question. Can you talk about the value of each of those different kinds of events and how we should choose between Okay, should we maybe try to put on a conference? Should we maybe try to put on a, a, a workshop or a retreat? And what are the value of those different kinds of live events? Well, let me share with you what I've done. I jumped okay, out perfect. there with a conference, with a conference, but I also incorporated breakout sessions, which are workshops within that conference. So um, a live uh, breakout sessions give them the opportunity to visit workshops given by the different authors that you've invited to come to participate. This is not just about you; it's about bringing others in and and helping them uh, to be successful and succeed as well. And so it um, gives the opportunity for them to to hear you to to see you and, and to, um, oh gosh, feel your passion of, of what you've done, what you've done for them, the, the book, it's for them, the reader. Um, now I haven't had the retreat yet. I've, I've had a team retreat, but I haven't done a retreat as far as for, um, outsiders to come in. But again, I'm all for a conference and incorporate within that conference a workshop. Hmm. That's really good. That's really, really good. How do you go about planning something like this? Because honestly, the idea of trying to figure out a venue space, trying to figure out pricing, how people purchase tickets, all the systems involved in, in getting speakers and organizing all that, that sounds like, like a lot of work. So how do you go well, about doing that? tell you what I've done and then I'll give you steps of, of what I would recommend for you to do, the, the authors who are listening. Um, the Powerful Journey Women's Conference has a team. I have built a team around me. And so all of that hard work is broken down into um, smaller parts where the team members are working um, in their gifts in their zone of, of genius, such as I have on my team, one who is um, a day event coordinator. She and I have worked together closely leading up to the conference itself. Whereas the day of the conference, Kent, if there are fires to put be put out, I know nothing about them. Because <laughs> Which is she probably takes, good. Yes, she takes care of it. All of the problems or, or any issues go through her. And I hear about it after the conference is over because she's done such a great job of taking care of it. I also bring in um, on my team, there is a decor or decoration coordinator. She has visited the event with me and we come up with creating the atmosphere the environment that we want our attendees to experience from the moment that they enter the building, wherever we have it. Um, we have hostesses. 
that are greeting the ladies with pom-poms, with signs that say, welcome, you're beautiful, uh, you're successful, you're fantastic. I mean, from the moment that they enter the venue, they are driven in, welcomed in um, by a, 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 a list um, of things that we put together where we want them to have an unforgettable experience. I have a hostess coordinator who, who puts that together for us. Then there's a registration coordinator. When they walk in, they are greeted with the, the registration team and we try to make the, the check-in as seamless as possible. Mm. Um, and then we have a vendor coordinator. We invite vendors to come and participate with us. Um, and the authors also have vendor booths. So I have a vendor coordinator that takes care of all of that. So your question was, how do you make it um, where it's not a lot of work on you? You surround yourself with a strong team, a team who has caught the vision that God has given you and, and they are excited to run with that vision. Now, are these are these volunteers who are doing this? Like, is anybody paid on this team or it's people who are simply excited and they're volunteering to help with these different aspects? The people that I've chosen to be on my team have actually gone through the Powerful Journey, Authors Academy or the Speakers Academy. And so they know what the Powerful Journey is all about. Okay. They know what I'm about. And or volunteers, but I do, um, I do give an honorarium to them for the hard work that they've done. Okay. Yes. So when you think about, I'm just trying to think about the kind of the background logistics of, of all this, because I think of, of when you're putting on an event, there's kind of the front stage aspect, which is the programming, the venue, mm -hmm. all these systems and, and all that stuff. And then there's sort of the, the backstage part of it, which is figuring out the financial piece. So when you're mm -hmm. doing doing a live event like this, like obviously you're making a profit of some kind, correct? Or at least, mm -hmm. at least your goal is to not, to not lose money, I assume. Correct. Correct. And so what you do is you create a budget and write your registration um, accordingly so that you do walk away with, with a profit. Um, and, you know, I, I, I bring in so much, Kent, that the um, the experience is is what it's all about as well. Right. I, right. I have a a photo booth that is free to them, that where they get together and they take pictures and and it's something that they can walk away with, um, showing the experience that they've had. Now, let me share with you, my event is in person and virtual. We don't leave the virtual regist registrants out, the gotcha. attendees. Okay. They have fun as well. Um, I have a team member who only engages the virtual attendees. We do prize giveaways. They are included in those prize giveaways. They are included in even the photo booth because the um, the owner of the photo booth has it where she can make it digital as well for those who are attended virtually. So when I say create an unforgettable experience, it's not just for those who are in person, but it's for those who are attending virtually as well. Wow, I, I love that because that, see, that sounds like a complicated piece though. When I think of Okay, how do you figure out the, the camera stuff? How do you figure out the streaming stuff? And I I know there are people who do this stuff all the time, and I'm sure it's I'm sure I'm overthinking it, but it sounds like there's a lot of pieces to that. So is the way that you do that is you have somebody who just simply takes care of all that. I assume you don't have to worry about any of those details yourself. You have people who are great at that. They're they're part of this this whole process. They take care of it, and then you can focus on just making the experience as great as possible. Absolutely. Um, I hire a person, a tech technician that runs the entire virtual piece that runs the, you know, takes care of the microphones, the lights, all of that. So you're right. I don't have to 
um, deal with that at all. Now, what I do is I schedule, um, a, it's a day schedule. And so I have on it what time everything will happen. And so he or she have that along with my coordinator and anyone else who's um, who's helping in the backgrounds. We all have this day schedule that helps us to, to stay on point on time. Can you talk some about how you market the event? Because you can have all the systems set up and, and put on a great event, but unless there are people there, then obviously it doesn't mean a lot. So what are some of the ways that you market your live events? Because I am highlighting and featuring authors who have gone through the Powerful Journey Authors Academy, who have gone through the Telling Our Stories anthology, they are re- required and requested to sell 10 tickets each. So okay. that is, that's one way. The other is I have a social media manager who, um, who creates the the marketing pieces and we give it to each of them um, to share on their own social media uh, platforms and so it's constantly out there we are we all use the same hashtags we are tagging each other and so it's constantly out there we have a video that we create that goes out as well as a marketing piece and the two days um, of this conference, there are about 14 authors that are being highlighted. So you better believe they are inviting their family and friends. They are inviting um, their, their co-workers and their neighbors, their church members. And so we, we, we don't have, um, never had a problem with filling the space. I really, really like this idea of having the people that you're highlighting at the conference, have them being required to sell tickets and to bring other people. That is such a genius move. I've actually never heard that before, but it seems like such an obvious thing to do. I'm not, I'm kind of baffled why I've never heard of this before. Cause it just, it seems like such an effective way to, to try and fill up seats, to get enthusiasm, you know, and to market what you're doing. I really like that. Well, what better way to to have come and support you than your loved ones, your friends, your family? And so, yeah, I invite I invite people to come, but it's great when they fill their tables with their cheerleaders themselves, those who are supporting them. They also have created um, a launch team that have helped them as okay. well. And that launch team helps to invite others. Uh, we did a reveal, a book reveal recently, and there was a lady on there who the author didn't know, but it was because one of her launch team members had invited her to come on. So that's how the, the, the word is spread and the, uh, the excitement is built because you create and build a launch team who want to support you, they believe in what you're doing, and they help create the excitement as well. Can you talk about how you, how you sell books at live events? What are some of the, the ways that you do this? Uh, obviously, you're going to have probably a table at the back of the room or somewhere where people can buy books, but are there some other ways to integrate your own books into a live event? Maybe uh, having them part of the, the ticket that they purchase or giveaways or other things like that? We do. I'm glad you asked that. Each of the participants are asked to um, to donate a prize giveaway, and so they, of course, want to give away one of their books. But they don't just package package it as a book. Um, one of the ladies hers um, was that Lemonade Life, and so she had her book in a big basket with lemons around inside of it. And I think there was a lemonade jar and, and a glass. And I mean, it was beautiful. And um, other ways that we create interest in our books is each of the ladies get to stand and give um, a, 
a short message about her book. She talks about her story because that's what her book is. Her book is her story. And we have found time after time after time where her story helps to free her because many of them are sharing their stories publicly for the first time. Right. But it also goes out into that audience, Kent. And it, it, it's like giving that woman a big hug sitting in the audience who thought she was the only one going through that particular situation. Wow. And so that creates right there um, excitement to, to come to that woman's table and to purchase her book, to sign up for any programs that she might have um, along with her brand as well. Man, I, I love that. I really, really love that. So basically, you're looking for any opportunity to get people engaged as much as possible with this so they can build relationships with authors, mm -hmm. with, with friends, which to me seems like that is really the whole point of having a live event in the first place. It's not necessarily to promote your own stuff. It is to create a space where people can engage and interact, they can invite, and they can have all this cross-pollination of ideas. So I, I love this. This is, this is phenomenal. Yeah, the authors come in. We have a parade of authors is what we call it. And um, they walk the pink carpet and it's pink because my brand colors are black, white, and pink. They come in on some lively music with their book in hand and just having a good time. Everybody's cheering them on when they walk in with their books. And so once again, it goes back to the experience um, the experience is for not only the participants, but for those who are in attendance with them. And we also make the event bigger than us. Hmm. Bigger than us in that we give a scholarship to a single mom of a special needs child. We oh, give a cool. scholarship to a graduating high school senior. Um, when I had this event in my hometown of Shreveport, Louisiana, I partnered with a homeless shelter there and found out what they needed. And so we asked attendee to bring some of those toiletries that were needed to donate to the, the homeless shelter. Plus Kent, the homeless shelter brought a van of women from the shelter. Mm to the conference. It was wow. just amazing. Amazing. Then uh, we've done a back to school uh, event where the conference was in August when the students were getting ready to go back to school. And so everyone was asked to bring items to give to children that might not have the, the supplies needed. So again, make the event bigger than you connect it to something, to a cause that you're passionate about and, and get others on board with that as well. Man, that, that is, that is so great because it would be so easy to make this thing just about you as the author putting on your event. And we've probably all participated in events like that, where you go and it's all just like sales stuff after sales stuff. And it's all by this and by this. And, and it's all about kind of this brand or this, this person just constantly promoting themselves. But I, I love that you're making this very much about how can we tie this into other things that are bigger than us, that are bigger than this event, build relationships. Yeah, it, it's great. This is great. It is. It is. So can you talk about what are some of the biggest challenges in putting on a live event, especially if someone's doing this maybe for the first time? What are some of the biggest challenges they're likely to encounter in doing this? First of all, you have to have a vision and a mission that is unstoppable. Get that in your mind that no matter what comes your way, it's unstoppable. In, in 2000, you're, um, when we, 2020, when the um, pandemic, everything was closed down, the question was, will we have our live event? And what happened we pivoted to our virtual event. We had never done 
a live and a virtual event. Wow. And so that mindset that nothing is going to stop us, we created a virtual event and now we have virtual and in person. And so you look at the challenges, you look at them as opportunities to, to get your message, your mission out to, uh, to continue no matter what. You find a way over it. What are some ways that somebody could get started? Maybe they, they're considering doing this. They're hearing you talk about how, how much this is such a valuable thing. What would be the first step somebody would take in actually doing a live event? And I guess my, my second question attached to that is how long should they start planning an event? Would it be like a year out, six months, something like that? A year out is when we start because you've got to get your venue. Um, they fill up fast. So um, start a year out start by laying the foundation, um, get a vision. What is it that you're wanting to accomplish? Why are you doing this? What, what, are, what is your why and what is your mission? Once you have that foundation, then you begin to build your team and can't build a team who believes in you, who believes in your vision. They see your vision. Um, they're not coming in trying to change your vision. They're a part of what God has given you. Then once you build that team, and, and I mentioned before, breaking down what that team should consist of, um, a day coordinator, someone who is, is, is running the show the day of the event itself, then remember who gift is to decorate. And a coordinator for the, the greeters, the hostesses. Remember, we are creating an, an unforgettable experience. Um, you want a registration coordinator who will get her, her team um, that will come and help to, to make it a great sign-in uh, once they, they arrive. And then we have a vendor coordinator. All of those are part of the team. Um, I mentioned, again, making the event bigger than you, um, find a charity or create a scholarship that uh, something that you're passionate about. Um, then of course, the location. When you think about a location, think about the atmosphere that you're wanting to create. This year, our is a college. Uh, it's the junior, uh, it's a junior college here. And it is the Collin College Conference Center holds up to 900 people. Well, oh I know that people are still, um, some, some people are still wanting to social distance as much as possible. And so we're giving them that opportunity. If they purchase a table, we're, we're making sure that all of their guests are at their table mm. and we're reserving that table also for our vendors, our vendors love to be a part of the conference. And so we choose a space where our vendors are surrounding in the, the, their inside of the conference room around the walls. And so they participate, they, they get to hear the speakers and, and, and they are a part of it as well. And so we, you, you have created your vision, you've gotten your team together, you created something bigger than yourself, you've chosen your location, and then you begin to work on the experience that you want, not only your participants to have, but your guests as well. Um, make it fun from them, from the moment that they enter. And so in your mind, enter that location yourself. You picture where you're going to have everyone situated to create that experience that you're wanting them to have. Um, make sure that you hire a, a, a videographer because you want to capture your day, your attention. But not only that, you want to capture testimonials from those who are attending. And um, so, yeah, so that you can play it for the next year and, um, and use it for promotional. Um, as well, 
and have a photographer capturing um, the fun, the engagement, the networking, all of that, have that captured as well. And then last but certainly not least, have a moment where you are inviting them not only to the next event, but inviting them to participate in your classes, your, um, your community, have, have ways for them to sign up at your table to continue to uh, support you, um, whether you have other programs that you want them to be a part of, classes, um, of course, your book, you are autographing your book right there on site. And again, Kent, just making it a great experience, one that they will talk about until the next time they come. Mm -hmm. This is this is phenomenal. I feel like I'm getting a master class in live <laughs> event design. I really am. Uh, because I just I would never have thought about 99% of this stuff. It is kind well, of funny. I have created I've created a cheat sheet for the um, for the daily writers community. And um, they'll be able to to grab that from my uh, from my website. So if you're listening and you're driving and you're, you're not able to take notes or you think you've missed something, you can go and grab the, uh, the cheat sheet. Oh my goodness. That's, that is awesome. And so that actually, that's a really great segue. So where could we get the cheat sheet and how could we find out more about you and your event and your book and all the 87 cool things that Phyllis <laughs> is doing? Well, um, you can find it all at phyllisjenkins.com. That's my website. Phyllis, P-H-Y-L-L-I-S, J-E-N-K-I-N-S.com. Also, um, and you can register for the upcoming event, which again is virtual and in person. And um, I'm in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So for those of you that are outside of Texas, if you want to grab some girlfriends and make this a girlfriend trip, we have a host hotel that has offered discounts. And so you can register on the website for the conference. And um, Kent will have a link where you can register as well in the show notes here today. Um, my books are on Amazon, which are under which is under Phyllis Jenkins. I'm the author of five books and uh, an anthology that we just released back in November, Telling Our Stories Anthology, Volume 1, and we are working on Volume 2. So if you are listening to that, this today, and you are interested in sharing your message in an anthology, then you are welcome to do so. Can already have... Um, list for volume three so we Wonderful. are we're super super excited about that as well my Fantastic. email address my email address is phyllis at phyllisjenkins.com phyllis at phyllisjenkins.com and kent will have ways for you to connect with me in the show notes on facebook on instagram on linkedin um and i'm looking forward to to having to, to meeting and, and having some new friends come along. Fantastic. Phyllis, thank you so much. This has been an absolute blast. And we will, of course, have links to all that in the show notes. I can't thank you enough. I've taken a bunch of notes. So if you've seen me with my head down half this conversation, <laughs> it's because I made a bunch of notes on this. I really hope that everybody considers doing a live event. I know for many of us authors, that feels intimidating. But anybody who has been to a great live event know that knows that you cannot replicate that. Uh, it's something that is a unique way to impact people. So I just want to encourage all of us to sort of get past our discomfort and gather us a team and have a vision for an event and just get out there and do it. So Phyllis, thank and you again. Ken, this I just want to, I want to say that if there's anyone listening and they really are fearful of jumping out there and doing it, reach out to me. I'm, I'm, I will be happy to answer any other questions to to uh, push you along, to cheer you on, and uh, and to help you because once you have that first event, that's all you need because you will continue to want to have that over and over again because again 
it's the experience that you are creating and you're getting to sell your book right yes. there live. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, Phyllis, thanks again. This has been an honor and a privilege, and I appreciate all the wisdom that you shared with us today. Can't thank you for having me. It was an honor to be here. Wasn't that a fun conversation? I took a ton of notes in this podcast interview, probably more notes than I've taken in a long time because I was just scribbling away furiously trying to write down all of Phyllis's insights because she's obviously really, really experienced with this and does an incredible job. If I had to choose one takeaway that I learned from Phyllis, I would say it's this, that all of us should consider creating a live event. Even if it's something that feels intimidating, even if it's something that you have to start planning a year in advance, which she of course recommended, and it takes a lot of work, but man, you can really impact people's lives when you consider putting together a live event. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to try my hand at this. This fall, we're going to start with a small retreat for the Daily Writer. It'll be, you know, probably no more than 20 or 25 people there total. Again, more info coming out about that over the next two or three months. But I'm going to try my hand at this because I know the power that live events can have in people's lives. So I'm going to go ahead with it and uh, we shall see what happens. Well, I want to encourage you to check out Phyllis's books, her website, and her amazing podcast. There, of course, will be links to those in the show notes. Phyllis is just Simply one of the kindest, most inspiring and encouraging people I know. And I'm so thrilled that she's a part of our daily writer community, as is her amazing husband, Dave. So if you've ever thought about being a part of a writing community where you can feel inspired and encouraged and where you can be surrounded by people who are accomplishing cool things like Phyllis and Dave are, then you might want to consider joining the daily writer community. You can find out more by going to dailywriterlife.com slash community. Well, hey, thanks so much for listening. And of course, I want to give Phyllis a massive shout out for taking time to be a guest on today's episode. It was an absolute blast having you. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. I want to take a moment to let you know about our Daily Writer membership community. You know, one of the very best ways to develop better habits and impact more people's lives with your writing is to spend time around other successful writers. So if you're tired of feeling isolated and chasing success on your own, then I know you're going to love the Daily Writer community. For years, I searched for the kind of writing community that I would want to join, but I could never find what I wanted, so I created my own. Some of the features include weekly writing sprints, monthly community calls, book discussions, calls with guest experts, and much more. For more info, you can visit dailywriterlife.com community. Thanks, and I'll see you tomorrow.